Welcome back to our tutorials on getting Debian set up. So if you are following along, we've already installed Debian. We are making sure our primary user is in the sudo group. We've installed the budgie desktop environment and installed some nice, better looking themes. And today we want to talk a little bit more about advanced software. Now, one of the things that's making this version of Debian really good is that it's supporting a little bit more hardware than Debian has traditionally done in the past. But one of the downsides about Debian is that oftentimes the software doesn't move as fast as it does with other places. The thing is, though, is with Debian, with the innovations of flat packs and snaps and app images, you can get the latest versions of software without worrying about all of the background information. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit about adding uh, snaps and flat packs onto, uh, onto Debian here. And so let's go ahead and just do a quick start. We're going to search for the application Audacity. Okay, so if you search for the application Audacity, this is a good free open source audio editor, and you click in on this guy here, you'll see that we have Audacity in here. We can install this version, and let's see if it'll tell us the version. I'm not seeing much information about the version here listed. There you go, 3.2.4. Uh, so... Uh, this guy here, it's a little bit older of an application. Now, the reason Debian is keeping the older versions of the application installed here is because Audacity was recently purchased, and they've added some uh, some trackers inside of the code, and so a lot of Linux teams are pushing back against that. Now, you can get the absolute latest version if you do not mind the tracking stuff if you're doing a Snap or a Flatpak version of Audacity, but out of the box, Debian doesn't do that. We just have the source available from the Debian repos. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk you through how to install Snap and how to install Flatpaks. So with this, you can do this with the terminal or you can do this with Synaptic Package Manager as we looked at last time with the budgie themes. Now I'm just going to show you the packages we need, but we're actually just going to do everything inside of our uh, inside of our uh, our terminal, just so you guys can get used to the fact that the terminal is a good application. It's something you shouldn't be afraid of, but still, I'm going to show you kind of graphically what we need. So if you do a search for Synaptic, there's a few packages. Flatpak is the main application that controls the Flatpak system, but you also want this application here, which is GNOME Software Plugin Flatpak. What this is going to do is, we've already looked at that GNOME Software Store briefly a moment ago. You can manage Flatpaks with the terminal without any support, but if you install this GNOME Software Plugin Flatpak, this is going to give you GUI support. It's going to plug the GNOME Software Store into Flatpak so you can install those applications. Now, since Flatpak is entirely done on a free and open source framework, you also have to manually add Flatpak repos. We're gonna go ahead and do that. But before we do that, uh, we also wanna look at Snap. So Snap is the canonical Snapcraft method of delivering software. It is fairly controversial and I've had my own opinions about it. We're leaving those opinions aside today because I realize a lot of people want to be able to use those. They do not care about the controversy, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do it. Now, you'll see a package here called Snap. This is not what you need. You need Snap-D. This is the daemon to control enabling Snap packages. Okay, so you want to install Snap-D. Now, since Snap is more of a proprietary framework and all of the applications are built all the way into its repo, there's no extra configuration. You install Snap-D and you are good to go. However, just like Flatpaks, there's no direct way to manage this in the GUI in the GNOME software store. So you do need to add, once again, come up here and you will see a GNOME uh, you will see a GNOME software plugin Snap, just like the one for Flatpak. So if you have Snap installed and you're not seeing Snaps show up in your GNOME software store, it's probably because this is missing. Now, of course, if all you're going to be using is Snaps, you don't need that plugin. You go, go ahead and install Snap-D, and then when you have in Snap-D installed, you can install the Snap store, which is basically the GNOME software store, but it's curated 
for all of the snap packages. And it can actually do everything else, but it's basically a fork of the GNOME software store, so there's really not a reason to run both of them on your system. Since we already have the GNOME software store, and we're going to assume that you're going to running that uh, if, you, uh, if you are using uh, this tutorial, we're just going to go ahead and stick with that. So those are the packages we need, but we're going to do this in the terminal because, as I said, I want you guys comfortable with the terminal. You do not need it all the time, but I want you to understand that the terminal is a very good tool. Um, and so with the terminal being a very good tool, uh, we really want to encourage you to not get super afraid to, uh, to use it. So... There we have it. We made this guy nice and big so you can see what we're doing without me having to do any weird post stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that there are no updates that need to be performed. So let's go ahead and do that since it's been about a week since we've done this. You can see three packages can be upgraded. All right, so now we're going to do sudo apt upgrade. And it's going to ask us, do you want to install this? say yes and then this is going to install all of our upgrades so this makes sure that if there's any wonky stuff going on making sure the system is up to date will usually solve that so once this is done then we're going to install our tools now you can install multiple applications all at once so sudo apt install is what you need to do and we're just going to do the flat pack and the flat pack plugin separately and then we're going to do the snap and the snap plugin separately in reality, you can do both of them, uh, your, or all of four of these packages at the same time. You just put a space after each one, and you have to know what the names of those packages are. So we have flat pack, and notice the spelling is P-A-K. There's no C in there. And then the second one we need is GNOME software, uh, not software, make sure you're spelling right. Uh, GNOME software plugin. And flat pack. Now, what you'll notice is you'll notice those words really quickly uh, shot out. That's because I pushed the tab key. If you push the tab key in the terminal, it will usually autofill if it knows what you're intending to do. Since it knows I'm installing software and it as already has the updated repo, the software knows that GNOME software plugin flat pack is a thing. And so it's going to say, oh, okay, I see that that's what you want to install. Okay, so now we have our flat pack is installed and our um, uh, flat pack GNOME uh, software center is installed. You push up, it'll give you your previous command. Sure, let's just go ahead and do that and hit back and just add the next one. So this was snap D, remember? And you remember, I could put all of these in the same, uh, in the same line. I just did it separately just to... Yeah, keep it in your mind that these are two isolated cases. This one you'll see is quite a bit bigger uh, to download. And this might be because, who knows, it's a bunch of proprietary code in the background. It might just have a lot of extra repos plugged into it. I don't really know, but we're not going to worry much about that right this second. We're just going to go ahead and get it all installed. And the last thing we need to do is, as I said, Flatpak needs a repository added. So to do that, we're going to type in Flatpak, and then we're going to add um, remote add. And then we need to, we're going to go ahead and add this tag, which is if not exists, uh, which is dash dash if dash not dash exists. This is going to add it if it's not already here. Then we're going to give it a name, which is going to be flat hub. And then give it the location, which is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash flat hub dot org slash repo slash. Flat hub dot flat pack repo and of course we do need to spell flat pack correctly I accidentally put that C in there and now it wants your password so enter the password for your system and then it is completed so from here we're gonna reboot the system
Now, having restarted, let's go ahead and boot up our software store again. So booting up for software. And with our software now, when you first boot this up after installing these, it is going to take a little while to download the software catalog. So don't be alarmed at the amount of time this is going to take. All right, so now that we have our software here installed, our, our new um, uh, software store with now our plugins and whatnot, now we can go ahead and do a search. And we're going to search for Audacity again. And the reason we're going to search for Audacity, if I can spell right these days, the reason we're searching for Audacity is this is actually available in the repo and as a snap and as a flat pack. So once it finds Audacity, we'll go ahead and click this. And now under our install button, we will have this drop down. Here is our Debian source, the one we look first looked at. This is the flat hub version from flat pack. And then we have a latest stable from the Snap Store, and now we have a 3.2.4 from the Snap Store. So if you actually wanted to experiment with the latest beta, you can go ahead and roll this, or if you just need solid predictability, you can run this one. And let's see if they give, give us the information on the Flatpak version. So this one is version 3.3.3, .3, updated just two weeks ago. Here's a little bit about our version history. And again, if you look at the main Debian one, you'll see 3.2.4 says four years ago. Now, if I remember, if I remember correctly, the, the version three, the num first number here actually refers to something in the Debian repos, I think, because this is actually, if we were to install it, would be version 2.4, if I remember correctly. So don't take my word on that one exactly, but uh, you can see the flat pack version is, uh, 3.3 just two weeks ago, and you'll see 2.3 was the one four years ago. So that's why I, I believe that is the case. So this will allow us to install software from FlatHub, from Snap, or from the Debian repositories right here, meaning we can run the latest software without having to wait for Debian to push the updates. Okay, uh, one thing I'm going to do here, and uh, my apologies, I, this was supposed to be in the middle of the video, but for some reason my audio cut out when I was showing it. I'm going to show you guys how to add the flat pack if you're like, hey, I'm a little concerned, I, I won't remember how to do that flat pack, or uh, can you slow it down a little bit, or whatever else. I'm going to actually show you how to find that information, uh, because simply boot up your uh, web page here. And since I've not done any modifications on Firefox, my apologies, but it's going to be searching with Google. <laughs> um, oh, that's fine. We'll deal with it. So here's your flat pack and then get set up. And then here you can pick the icon for your distro. In this case, we are using Debian. So these are the commands that we ran the uh, apt install flat pack. And notice that they're doing it here from the uh, from the root user, we did it from the sudo. So then apt install gnome software plugin flat pack, and then this was the command to add that repo. So you can come down here and you can add that repo here as well. And then of course it does tell you we do have to restart the system. So now that we have all that installed, I'm gonna show you one more thing to get your Debian system set up. And that is we're going to install one flat pack and I did a full video on this particular flat pack. So we're not going to walk through how to use it at all, but you do want to start by installing this flat pack called flat seal. You'll notice it's only available from the flat hub. What flat seal does is it's going to give you the ability to easily manage all of the permissions of all of your flat packs inside the GUI. This might take a while to install, so I'm not going to record all that. And I did an entire video specifically on flat seal. So I'm going to redirect you to that in the um, description of this video. So now we have Debian set up. We have a good theme. We have our primary user in the pseudo group. Now we have the ability to use snaps or or flat packs inside of our system. And so we're getting ready to get this guy using. I think there's a few more tutorials we want to do. Of course, continue to list in the comments here the types of things we want to see. I know the next thing on our list is to do some uh, restore points and backup software solutions. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, then I'm going to uh, sift through all the comments again and see what other tutorials you guys want to see on Debian. And then maybe we'll do a similar thing on Linux Mint uh, just to 
get an understanding about how that works. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.